Well, good morning, guys. It's our last morning at the Pisgah Inn. We're saying goodbye to Betsy and Jim as they head west to their home in Alabama. Uh, and we head northeast on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Uh, it's going to be a bittersweet departure. Uh, the view here is great. The location, I, I can't say anything bad about the Pisgah Inn. Uh, Jim's first concern when he saw the reviews was there's no air conditioning. And it was going to be August when we got here. Well, he didn't under he didn't know that we were at 5,700 feet above sea level here. So it's that's the reason they built the inn up here. So it's nice and cool. So our game plan today is to make it, and I keep forgetting the name of the town. Blo Blowing Rock. Blowing Rock. We're going to be going to Blowing Rock, uh, North Carolina. We have reservations there, and just a nice leisurely pace with the parkway today, and taking some sights. Cradle of the Forest Street. And we're going to go see the Cradle of the Forestry. And we'll talk more about that later. But uh, waiting for our breakfast to be delivered and drinking some more coffee. And uh, looking forward to getting our day started. Had our continental breakfast. And we're uh, going to backtrack a few miles to visit. Uh, what's the place we're going to go? Cradle of the Forestry. Cradle of the Forestry. I think I know what that is, but I'm not sure, so I'll wait till we get there. Well, we got a half a tank of gas. Why was I thinking we were low? Cherokee. Goodbye, Pisca Inn. Thank you, Ray and Linda. What an amazing place. I'm jealous it's so far away from home. I mean, it's so far away from the Blue Ridge Parkway, it must be at least um, 100 feet. Miriam wanted to visit the Cradle of Forestry located just off the Blue Ridge Parkway along US Route 276. Good morning. Back in 1892, this guy, George Washington Vanderbilt, of the famous Vanderbilt family, owned about 120,000 acres of land in western North Carolina. So he built a little home and called it the Biltmore, which is now a museum and is open to the public. He saw the appalling condition of the forested lands around his estate. So he hired this guy, Gifford Pinchot who was one of only two people in the United States trained in forestry. He had just returned from Europe where he studied forestry and forestry management. While at the Biltmore State, he met John Muir, who became his mentor in the area of conservationism. Pinshaw then moved on to Washington, D.C. to become the first head of the U.S. Forest Service. Then George Vanderbilt hired this guy, Carl Schink, who had just immigrated from Germany and who was now the third person in the United States trained in forestry. He convinced George Vanderbilt to let him build the first school of forestry in the United States on the Vanderbilt property, which is now this museum. So Miriam is on the lookout for houses to buy. She's thinking this would be perfect. Yeah. Got the right size. Yeah. The yeah. Actually, <laughs> joking aside, I could live in a place like this happily. A distant shot of the Pisgah Inn. 
as we pass it heading north. Destination today is Blowing Rock, Blowing Rock, North Carolina. Day seven, right? We're on day seven. Oh, all right. Yeah. We're seven days into our trip and uh, another picnic lunch. I think we've only eaten out four times in the yeah. entire trip. Everything else has been uh, food we brought with us or picked up along the way. Pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. Today, I'm having fried chicken leftover from last night. I was getting one of the rolls and some soup Marianne brought. Gazpacho. Yep, what she said. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm hungry. I think one of the many things that surprised me about the parkway was the number of tunnels. There were a total of 26 tunnels along the Blue Ridge Parkway. 25 of them are in North Carolina. So uh, we took a little bit of a pit stop, stretch our legs, uh, make a cup of coffee. Uh, your, map, your map is on the ground. Yeah, I saw that. It's just a map. And basically it's instant coffee and cold water. It gives you the effect of coffee, which is what I'm looking for. It's early afternoon. I mentioned earlier how the mountains in this region are spectacular. So much different than Virginia for some reason. It's, it's profound. And this is the view from this rest stop. And all the pine. It's like we're in an alpine area uh, with the firs and such. That's uh, Mount Mitchell, almost 6,700 feet. And we're about uh, almost 5,000 here. Very scenic, very pretty. Very buggy though, very buggy. I'm torn between making it to our destination and, and just enjoying the ride and leisurely ride and stopping and seeing things as opposed to getting into our accommodation so I can edit some video because it's already, is it Thursday or Friday? Thursday. Thursday, well I have until tomorrow to get to ready the video ready and loaded I think I'm pointing the camera too far up anyway <sighs> well show me on the map where we're going well that's easy <laughs> we're going that way a little more specific This is the Lynn Cove Viaduct, the last section of the Blue Ridge Parkway to be completed, which took almost 40 years after initial construction began. 
The viaduct goes around Grandfather Mountain, and because of special ecological and political concerns, the parkway is literally elevated off of the mountain to minimize the actual impact to the local environment and ecology, and is truly an engineering marvel. Well, we uh, made it to our destination tonight, the uh, Blowing Rock Inn in Blowing Rock. Beautiful, quaint little place. And it's a, it's kind of a restored community. It's kind of cool. I'm not sure, I guess tourism, but I'll show you the room. But even across the street, there's another similar old school motel and a screen door. Love the sound of a screen door slamming. Ah, nice and tidy. Got our obligatory two beds, one for gear, one for us. And uh, I think the bathrooms were an afterthought. That's how old this uh, facility is. It's been remodeled. Just because the looks like these were add-ons, which is kind of cool. Closet, bathroom, anyway. But it's clean, it's neat. And uh, front door parking for the spider. So we're about a quarter mile from downtown. A couple of restaurants in there. We're gonna go over there and uh, grab us some dinner. Ah, getting kind of hungry. So, see what we can go find. Bowling rock, it's blowing. Blowing rock. <laughs> rock Bowling blowing. rock, blowing rock, whatever. <laughs> and then tomorrow night, we have reservations that are prepaid, non-refundable at this point. That's the Peaks of Otter Lodge up in the Roanoke area. Then the next day, the last day on the parkway is only an 86 mile day. Only 86? Only 86. So, <laughs> we better get I'm not sure. Sleep. I'm not sure exactly how I did the arithmetic on this, for this trip, but <laughs> I have to go back and figure it out later. This uh, adventure exploring stuff is fatiguing and requires work, but by golly, somebody's got to do it. And I think we're up for the challenge. Well, guys, back from dinner in the cute little town of Loin Rock, North Carolina. We're going to settle in for the night. What are your thoughts of the uh, today's ride and uh, oh, Loin Rock? Well, the ride was great. I enjoyed the meandering we, we did. I, I enjoyed the stops at the uh, cradle, cradle of the Forestry and mm -hmm. the Folk art Center. And uh, what a... That's where I took a nap. I didn't go in. <laughs> well, it was a nice shady spot for a picnic, too. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the views from the parkway were awesome. The Grandfather Mountain was particularly yes. spectacular. And um, that, that, that huge bridge that goes, you feel like you're riding through the air. That was actually the last section of the parkway to be completed. And that was completed, I believe, in the late 60s, early 70s. Because yeah. of the engineering problems they had in that area with the uh, way the mountains are designed. And uh, Blowing Rock is just as cute as it can be. Yeah. Uh, a great dinner. Oh my gosh, the speckled trout restaurant um, with live music. It was just really nice. Yeah, we, a nice treat. We uh, we found I found Blowing Rock because I was looking for the a midpoint for the ride, a town with lodging with front door parking that looked like it was clean, neat, and inexpensive, and this significantly exceeded expectations. So yeah. the Blowing Rock Inn. Uh, the top shelf and it's a small family owned non-chain hotel uh, yeah very comfortable yeah so uh we were finishing dinner and miriam said something that actually sort of frightened me she said you want to go back to the hotel and engage in some swinging and i'm thinking <laughs> i didn't know she was like that <laughs> well guys we're going to swing here for a minute and call it a night Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it,
give it a thumbs down. And don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment below.